INTPs and the practical. So this video is kind of a update, an update on just my life a little bit, where I've been and uh, what's been going on. So one of the biggest things is that as I am progressing through life, because I, I took a huge hiatus from, from participating on the YouTube streams, as probably you've noticed. Now I'll post like a couple weird things here and there, but I have limited my engagement, at least making videos and whatnot. And um, it kind of came from, well, I'm, so I'm writing a book, I'm trying to write a book and I'm writing and writing and writing. And I'm on the fourth draft of the third book that I'm trying to write. So I'm like, so this is literally like 16 drafts of writing. And it hit me of the practical necessity needed to engage with trying to articulate practically in a practical medium uh, to engage the hearts and minds of people to influence them through a story. And I quickly realized that I have little to no real experience in the real world of what that even means and what certain people are going to do during certain situations and how to how do they how do they make the decisions that they make and what they value and how does that manifest um, in different situations and all that kind of stuff and different kinds of people and especially if I'm trying to write a book I cannot rely on the abstract to get me there people are a lot more for the most part responsive to practical things and I am not Though there are there are some things in the practical realm that I that I do um, respond to that I get excited about for the for, for the most part I don't I don't even recognize that the practical really even exists or even my response my natural response to it and so in recognizing that I stopped writing stopped making videos because even the videos themselves are a, are a spewing of the abstract. And enjoying the uh, the INTP dashness, and not really um, taking the step to marry the all the abstracts and the theories, and putting it into a practical sense. And so I took a step back to force myself to limit myself, force myself to limit myself um, uh, to only being able to make decisions and feelings and stuff on what I feel and what I experience. And so basically limiting to what my eyes can see, smell. Now granted, it's not like you turn off the abstract, you can't, but forcing yourself to reevaluate life from a completely different part of the sphere. My dad has a, an analogy where it's like, we're all part of this like sphere and you're here and I'm here and, and everyone has like a different way of, of going about things, but they are still that kind of person. And so, but you can like learn from the different perspectives and whatnot. And so I wanted to, I guess, find a way to force myself to recognize or to, to witness and also value um, more practical things. And with that comes a, more of an excitement to, uh, engage with people. I find myself very much longing to engage with individuals. And and part of it is also rooted in just a lot of loneliness over the years and also hurts and uh, trying to figure out how to fit in in just the world. And once you start to find friends that are very um, worthwhile and you really appreciate them and, and they're very supportive of you and whatnot, you... Uh, you long to want to participate with them more often. Um, and I've gotten to a point where like I am cherishing those engagements, but also when you're going with people, you are learning more about them. You're witnessing more of like different kinds of people and, and it's feeding the abstract, absolutely. But um, you are in a place where you have to, you have to um, learn what people do because I also do want to, uh, I don't know, address certain things in life. I want to, I want to break down certain abstracts 
that require me to have to be on the front lines in, in the practical where things are messy. Um, things are very um, nice and pristine in the abstract. Nothing really has to be tested besides the rigorousness of your own mind and other people's con- conceptual you know, thinking. But um, if you can break down um, the practical and experience it, you can refine your abstract. So I don't know where you guys sit with all that, but like a good example is that Christianity. This is like, this is the weirdest marriage between high practical and high abstract because God is both highly abstract, but yet highly practical where there is the day-to-day engagement, but at the same time, um, there's like, whack stuff that's being (laughs) explored as you sit back and you wonder what does that truly mean or what is that why is that being expressed now like so abstract people know what to do with abstract thoughts um, and how that influence them influences them and how that engages their uh, I guess emotive response or or mental response but a lot of people they don't know what to do with it and they kind of breeze the abstracts over and they more focus on um, more of the concrete things. But, and on a personal level, I want to try to figure out how to break down the abstracts of God, so to speak, and marry the practical. Practical is really messy. Uh, Practical is Rahab, who is a prostitute, and yet is counted as righteous, and her life is spared because of... Um, her protecting the Israelites, so you know the abstract would 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 deem her as unclean or something like, oh, you're you're a prostitute, and so therefore you are a sinner or whatever, and um, you don't get to participate in also this abstract, which is you know heaven or God or whatnot. But but you see that she is able to. Um, participated and is even counted in the lineage of Christ. Um, and so uh, people that mostly live in the abstract, and unfortunately most Christians live in an abstract and a lot of preachers live in the abstract, and they don't know life. That's one of the biggest things I'm trying to break away from. I don't want to be limited by not truly understanding what life is. And I want to face it and see it for what it really is and how people really behave and who people really are. Because especially with INTPs, you, um, we, we really separate ourselves and not actively participate with the world very often. And so I guess I would encourage other INTPs. Now, I'm 27 right now. That's where I'm at. Um, I've had my fun, so to speak, where like I used to be an individual where as soon as I'm home from work, I'm spending hours trying to learn something, trying to pursue something um, that engages my mind and the abstract. And it's getting to a point now when I'm getting older where I'm realizing, I guess, the emptiness with it. But I mean, there's a lot of great things with it. It's not bad, but um, there is value in creating memories. You're creating a framework um, and a life, um, and a, a life limited by how much music you compose, the videos you make, the programs you learn, the other abstract things like history and those things that you learn. All that stuff is it's you don't really create a life through those things. You create a life through getting dirty with the people around you. (laughs) Not in a nasty way, but um, your means your hands are in the dirt. You are, you are, you're consciously making a choice every day to engage with the messy of life and um, finding um, value in it and finding the values of other people and valuing their values. And, but then you also will start to see how, you know, the imperfections of people and you can kind of shape better um, why people do the things they do. 
because uh, especially with INTPs, we are distant from a certain influence that other people are uh, heavily influenced by, and they not a lot of the time can recognize their own um, values or where they're coming from, and it's just kind of natural thought, and they're highly emotive. Um, put that all together, as far as they're concerned, it's just this way. Um, they don't sit back and observe. Or, uh, uh, you know, they make decisions based off of um, a structured value system that they have conceived based off of experiences and um, their own framework. So anyways, um, so, so all this is kind of like to say where I've been and also um, an encouragement for other INTPs to go outside, like actually engage with people and engage with them in a uncomfortable way where it's a little more than you are normally you would normally um, and take risks take a risk do something stupid something irrational maybe even get yourself even worked up a little bit mess like get messy and figure out what those emotions uh, what they are and break them down after you've had them um, I don't know just kind of I guess pushing the bounds of your own existence um, and I guess as we continue on living, we build, I guess, a better framework of what it means to be human, which I guess is kind of the motto of my life at this point. So, um, glad I could, you know, see y'all again. I oh, and I am so happy. Thank you so much for your guys' contributions to six thousand subs. I really appreciate um, each and every one of you for following along in this journey. And to those who were one of the few beginners, thank you for sticking around. Um, it's been a really fun ride just to have this, I guess, video or this channel to be a part of different seasons of my life. And this is my season right now. And unfortunately, there's not a lot of documentation. As you can probably see, I'm in a new place, you know, from some of the older videos I've been in. Um, but it's just kind of interesting just being able to witness the different um, changes and having you guys be a part of it. So um, stay safe uh, with the COVID stuff or whatever. Even that's becoming political. Just take it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Enjoy my um, my plea for your safety, I suppose. Um, and I'll see you guys in another video or another life. You never know. And... Tell me what you've been up to. Tell me what you um, are learning and your life and whatnot in the comment section. I want to hear it if any of you have survived through this much time of a video. So, all right. See ya.